Welcome to Telling the Tale. I'm your host, Mitchell Farley Wolf, and I'm joined by Dustin Jackson. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? Hey, Mitch, you know what? I think this episode is going to be a four out of ten. Damn. <laughs> rude, rude start. No, it's good. What, here, here's a better one. I think this episode's going to be a hole in one. Okay. Out of ten? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, of course, judging by that golf conversation we just had, where we talked about golf, uh, we are covering Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures, Episode 4, The Bogeyman. This is the final episode of Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures, uh, both this season and the game as a whole, because there was only one season. It was released on July 30th, 2009, and we were talking about how most of these Wallace and Gromit episodes were like directed, written, and designed all by the same person. And this is, again, the case with uh, this episode being Andy Hartzell's. Uh, Ooh. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. That said, there's been some news. Technically, there was news even before we released the last episode, but not before we recorded the last episode. Yeah. Um, that has... I think if you're a Telltale fan... It is extremely relevant to you, despite not being a Telltale game. Yeah, it still has that connection. Yeah, uh, a very tight connection, I would say. Terrible Toy Box and uh, Devolver Digital and, in this case, uh, Nintendo actually worked together to put out the uh, the full reveal. Can we call it a full reveal? Yeah, I think so, because this is the first time we have, like, a a full actual trailer for it. Yeah, of Return to Monkey Island. Is it the Return to Monkey Island? I think it's just called Return to Monkey Island. I like that better. It's cleaner. Although, I will forget that it is that way. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so we saw the trailer, and I think the big reveal there was that uh, we heard some voice acting. And it was the same voice acting as um, all of the voiced Monkey Island games have been. Yeah, we heard, uh, oh, I forget his name, Dominic something, I don't remember his last name. The voice of Guybrush. Yeah, I I forget his name I don't want to, his last name is a hard one to pronounce. Yeah, it's it's got some vowels in it. But uh, we we heard him and we heard Dominic Armato. I Armato. guess it wasn't that hard. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Rise to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so we, we heard him. And the other big reveal, in, in addition to seeing characters like Guybrush and Marley and LeChuck and, you know, like the, the classics all come back. We were pretty sure they'd all be in it. But yeah, just to sort of reassure you. Uh, we saw the art style, which was divisive, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, th- this is th- this became sort of a loaded conversation recently, um, because so many people did not like the art si- style in a way that was more personal to them, I would say, than the average not liking of a game thing. Uh, yeah, that they I don't took to really Ron get Gilbert's it. personal blog and were just commenting really mean, just gross stuff at him constantly. Yeah, that sucks. It it really sucks. Like here's the here's the thing. I really get not liking the art style. It is like a it's a big departure in a series that's had uh, established looks in the past. Uh, well, kind of. All the Monkey Island games kind of look different, but still, none of them really look as different as this. Yeah. Um, so I, I get it not being someone's cup of tea. What I don't get is being uh, such a asshole about it. Yeah, I will. I will be sort of on the side of not liking it right now, but I'm not on those people's side at all um, because y- one. I I realized like oh this isn't my favorite art style for this uh definitely doesn't look like I thought it could look or should look um mm-hmm. personally but I mean who cares <laughs> like, like why does it matter to me it doesn't matter to me it's just uh it's just this other game that someone else is making after they have been like for so many reasons for so many years 
prohibited from making like just the right kind of third game in the series that they've always wanted to make and now they're finally making it and now we have evidence that like this art style was picked about 12 years ago yeah uh (laughs) so like it's the game it was always supposed to be and that much makes me think like okay even if i don't like the art style i'm glad it is the art style because the thing i would have wanted is probably closer to the uh steve purcell you would know it if you saw it uh poster for Tales of Monkey Island, uh, Mm -hmm. which is the Telltale game. That poster, I think, is the best Monkey Island has ever looked, and it's very painterly. It's probably the most, uh, I guess, mature it's ever looked as well as as the best, which is just a preference. Uh, And this is, on the other hand, probably the most, like, childish, minimalistic it's ever looked. Yeah, I'm I'm a little more positive when it comes to this art style, but even then, it's still not, like, my favorite yeah, way but, the series has looked. Okay, so we were talking about this before, and the conclusion that we came to was, it's not our jam. It's it's less my jam than Dustin's, but I think both it's sort of not our complete jam. Yeah, it, it, it just wouldn't have been my first pick, but I, I still generally am cool with how it looks. Uh, um, there's some things here and there I'm not... A, a huge fan of mm-hmm. but i'm also thinking maybe the more i play it the more i will uh the more it might gel with me a little bit but the 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 point at the end of the day that we landed on was why would we ever tell ron gilbert <laughs> yeah why, why would we tell him that that's not i wouldn't like comment on his post saying why does it look like this it's so unimportant and even if he knows how we feel about the art style (laughs) yeah and even if you absolutely had to get that thought out there even if you had to tell ron gilbert i do not like how this looks you can do it in such a nicer way you can do it in a way that makes you seem like a human being yeah yeah and and not trash yeah just be like oh i thought it might have been uh it, no, you, you I, I, I like was actually going to maybe, maybe uh, I, I wasn't the best to make that example just now because <laughs> I, I couldn't think of a good way to end that sentence. Well, I mean, you I basically just said it uh, not earlier. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you said it earlier is basically a good way to say it. Just say it like, oh, it's, it's not really my jam, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, and that, I, that's I think all you that really this have game is especially interesting and important to fans of Monkey Island. Um mostly because of the connotation involved in this being uh like the story continuation of two Mm -hmm. um so like i i knew from the beginning the reason i would be interested in a new monkey island game right now especially from terrible toy box and ron gilbert is everything to do with like characters and story and setting and the art style is like sort of up there in things i would care about it but like not the number one thing i would care about this game so when i saw an art style i didn't like i was kind of thinking like oh you know um not what i would have done but sure um whereas i guess that is not the way people feel about it uh, (laughs) in general well you know me i'm i'm a big artist art styles Mm -hmm. are a big deal to me like an an art style can sell me on a game. Like even if it's like a garbage game, if it looks a way I really like, I I will buy it. But I I'm lucky I I don't necessarily mind how this looks, and I can just uh, live with it. Uh, but yeah, like even if you don't like it, it is it really like something worth being a huge asshole about to the yeah. guy making it? Yeah, especially like this of all games, because this is just the game that we've been talking about for so many years of like, Curse was, people like Curse, Curse was good, but it wasn't like the natural progression of how the series, in quotes, should have gone. Yeah. So that like having this game, no matter what it looks like, is such an amazing thing that to lose sight of that in the very second announcement of the game is just, it feels so petty and and uh and thoughtless especially yeah. just to turn that into um morale breaking non-constructive criticism 
Yeah, exactly. And and my thing with it is, this isn't even, like, the first time I've disliked an art style in a Monkey Island game. Mm-hmm. So this isn't, like, a new feeling. Like, I, I don't even dislike it per se, but, uh, like, the remake for the first game, I think, is, like, not the worst looking, but it's a little... Some parts of it are a little on the ugly side. Overall, it's fine. I, but, I like, like the remake of the first game. I love the remake of the second game. Two, um, I think the remake of two is like the best looking game in the series. Uh, but yeah. even the original, even the original version of two, I think is like one of really up there too. Yeah, it, um, different different flavors, but like original two or remake of two are both probably my top two looks of in game. And then the promotional yeah. stuff uh, for the promotional stuff, it's the it's the tails. Which is which mm-hmm. is probably like my overall favorite look of Monkey Island. The the tails. It's so good promotional artwork. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, the in game graphics for Tails couldn't quite reach that, but it still looks good. I still think it's a good looking uh, Telltale game. But um, yeah, you know, having an art style that doesn't immediately uh, click with you is just kind of how Monkey Island goes sometimes. Another thing about. Uh, the feedback was I saw that I, I read some of the comments because, you know, I'm I'm a magnet for the trash fire. And of course. I have to see what they're saying specifically. Otherwise, how could I live? And Dish girl, uh, w- a couple of them I found. They read like they were trying to be nicer than everyone else. They were trying to be like, look, I'm, I'm just trying to say I don't like it, but I, I don't want to pile on the hate. Um, yeah. Which. I would theoretically respect, but if you're going to do that, I think you need to understand what it is you're actually saying. Because in addition to stuff like that, they were also saying stuff on top of messages like that that were like, it's not too late. Look at the Sonic movie. You can change it. And like, that sucks. <laughs> that, yeah. Um, I think that Sonic movie changing in its art style was like, obviously it looks better. But the mm-hmm. more that time passes, the more I think, like, it was probably not a good thing for that to it happen. It was probably it was probably a nightmare for the people working on it to have oh, to terrible. go back and do it. And not only that, but it makes these people feel entitled. Like, yeah. we can do this. We can force them to change this thing they wanted. Yeah, it, it's, like, too good of an example that it's going to be pulled on every time. Like, oh, it, it can change after the trailer. It, it can look different. It can be different. Yeah, uh, we changed Sonic. Why can't we just force them to change it this time as well? Yeah. To uh, cater to what we want. Yeah, despite the fact that, like, clearly Sonic is a single model in a movie that, like, otherwise didn't need to be changed. Um, yeah. And, like, it was a lot of work, but it was, it was just, it's just the one model. Um, well, not the one. There were other models as well in that movie. But, like, uh, it, it, it's a facet of it that they tried to change. Whereas this is just everything that currently exists for the game is what you want to change. Yeah, you want to change the entire game, just redo it all? Yeah, it's like... Um, you, you should understand a little bit about game development process if you're asking for it to change mid-development. That's, yeah. it, it's a pretty big ask. Like, didn't they come out and say they'd been working on it for like two years now? You you really want them to go back and like that far? I think more and, than that, right? Because uh, when did Thimbleweed Park come out? Uh, like twenty eighteen. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I know. I think they've only been working like in earnest for two years, but um, yeah. Like I think this was a me- the immediate next project. Hmm. So y- yeah. you know what's another thing about this that weirds me out about it. With Sonic, it's one thing because Sonic is this, like, massive series. Like, yeah. tons of people know Sonic. This is Monkey Island. You're really getting, like, these entitled shitheads for Monkey Island? Not not to, you know, be, sound dismissive about the series. I love Monkey Island, but it we it's nowhere near Sonic levels, and it's still getting this? Yeah, it's wild because <laughs> we're doing this podcast, and I think we think of ourselves on the Telltale podcast as being the heads of maybe a pretty niche fan base currently of like fan base of telltale games uh, yeah we are the kings of telltale when you say it out loud like that yeah i mean if you if you sort of want to frame it in a certain light we're the we're the duchess and duck duchy (laughs) yeah (laughs) we're the duchess and duchy which is what it's called um of telltale (laughs) 
Yeah, and, I mean, and, uh, like we don't think that our kingdom's especially large. Yeah, um, but I, I guess we're large enough to have all kinds of fans, um, and and I guess the Lucas Art stuff is older and probably more prestigious and has a longer history than the Telltale stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Monkey Island of everything Telltale's ever covered is probably the like game series with the most. Mm, Walking Dead probably eclipsed it, but but Monkey Island might be the second like most prestigious game series that Telltale ever worked on. Yeah, because like Telltale worked on Sam and Max, but I think that wasn't quite as big as monkey island was yeah partially because it was other things too it wasn't it had one game monkey mm-hmm. island was a game series yeah um so yeah i mean that's our thoughts on i guess the controversy <laughs> yeah. if you can call it that uh involving return to monkey island uh ron gilbert did have to close comments on his blog and he won't that be personally sucks. sharing anything else about the game there will be that's, more information uh, coming out about the game but not from him that sucks so bad. Yeah, it does suck so bad. Uh, especially yeah, I hope because you guys are happy. That internal view of like his ideas about what the game was were what I was kind of looking forward to the most because mm-hmm. he's been this guy that's like clearly wanted to get back to Monkey Island for years and years and years, and he finally gets to do it after uh, close to thirty years. And, and this is what he gets for. Yeah, <laughs> this is what he's met with. Uh, nearly a, a third of a century later, everyone's been waiting yeah. for it, and then they just get immediately pissy. Uh, my my only games. complaint, my only big complaint about uh, Return to Monkey Island so far is, uh, it, it it is going to be on PC, but it's also the only console it's going to be on is the Switch, which yeah. I'm. It, it only sucks because the other Monkey Island games I have are on Xbox. <laughs> I would have liked to just have them all in one spot, but that's like the most minuscule, have... whiny sort of nitpicking you could possibly do. Well, only only like three of the five are on Xbox, right? Only two. Only two of the five. Which ones? Uh, the remakes, just one and two. Oh, is Tails not? I thought Tails might have been. No, uh, Tails is on PS3. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird how Telltale was just all over the place in terms of console releases. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Tales of Monkey Island was on WiiWare in PS3, but not Xbox. Sam and Max Seasons 1 and 2 were on Xbox, but not Season 3. That was only PS3. Um, Strong Bad was also not on Xbox. That was a Uh, WiiWare exclusive as well. Yeah. Well, it eventually got put on PS3. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 this whole crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Um <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I, I, I hope that sort of in response to this people can uh Well, I, I think curse and escape might be kind of forever locked out of new consoles unless they get a purposely done remake, which would be yeah. very hard for curse because it would involve like redrawing stuff that you couldn't redraw probably. Yeah, because I, I, I don't think it's as simple. Well, I've seen some people do like uh, upscales of Curse, like screenshots of it, and it looks pretty good. Like AI sure upscales? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a way more yeah. complicated process. But what I've seen people do looks pretty good. But yeah. yeah. I mean, what I, what I would prefer happen to it is like someone makes a really good controller based interface for scum vm and then it's just played over scum vm that's a good idea um but yeah that's actually not what we're talking about on today's episode everything (laughs) so far was filler every single thing yeah uh let's talk about the bogeyman the final episode of wallace and gromit i'm gonna start out by saying this is my favorite title of the wallace and gromit episodes the bogeyman i like i like muzzled more muzzled with an muzzled muzzled too with the next muzzled yeah mitch how did you feel about uh the bogeyman wallace and gromit game so i believe for muzzled muzzled uh i (laughs) said that it was the best one so far by uh length and Mm -hmm. i still think that's true i don't think this is as good as that i agree um i i think just the the cleanliness of muzzled like the muzzled the uh mystery of where these dogs are going what this guy who's just come into town is all about the elegance of him as a villain in the writing which is i mean it's not like 
it, it's not Charles Dickens, but it's <laughs> uh, it, it it makes you sort of hate this guy in a in a way that is uh, you can feel it. It it, it affects you in, in a slightly emotional way, even though it's very pulpy, very um, you know genre, very. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you I think it's saying. the close. I think muzzled is the closest the game has come to feeling like an actual Wallace and Gromit short. I think muzzled is the closest the game has come to feeling like a serviceable Sam and Max episode as well. <laughs> wow. I, that sounds, that's a mean way to say it. No, it's I not. I love Sam and Max. So like, that's a high bar. <laughs> I guess that's true. I, I gotta be honest, Mitch. I think this episode might've been my least favorite in the season. Hmm. I, I don't think it was my least favorite because I think that first episode, um, well, that first episode for you was the actual first impression of the game, so I could imagine yeah. that sort of playing better. But for me, yeah, I, I liked it enough. Already, I didn't get much out of it. I, I get that. Yeah, that was my first time playing Wallace and Gromit, so I was like, oh, I like this. This is charming. I'm enchanted by this world, yeah. even if it's not uh, the most in depth story. I, I still thought it was a pretty good first impression. Meanwhile, I don't necessarily think this is a good episode to end on. I would have maybe switched this in muzzled. Yeah, I think what we're learning about the Telltale formula, and it's either this point and click formula that is um, sort of like the, the capital of this formula is the Sam and Max games or the um, narrative choice formula where the mm-hmm. capital of that formula is The Walking Dead. Both formulas can really be about any franchise or IP or world at all. Um, yeah. We, I think we were talking before, it would be cool if there was a Conquer one. Um, that would be cool, yeah. Well, it, I was also saying, like, I wish they were able to do, a, like, a fourth season of Sam and Max in this style. I feel like you could do some funny stuff. Like, they could poke fun I'd at themselves that. in this formula. That would have been great to do with Sam and Max. But, it uh, might still be possible with Skunk Ape. Yeah, that would be cool. I'd I'd be so down. Yeah, because uh, if they keep up their schedule, the remake of Devil's Playhouse should be this year, right? Yeah, I I don't want to you know say it's definitely happening. They've never like confirmed that it would be out this year, but if they have if confirmed they keep that they're the making schedule, it though, yeah. But if if they stay on the schedule they were at, they could probably do it. I could, I could see devil's playhouse maybe taking a little longer i don't know um just because there's a little more to it i guess but uh boy am i ever looking forward to it yeah i'm excited to get that um from limited run because i i have the first uh sam and max for switch from limited run i ordered the second and then i'll get the third and i have a, a little uh I, like a little what am i even trying to say like a <laughs> the the cardboard like <laughs> container for the three of them uh, a sleeve oh nice that that they it's all a, go it's into. a sleeve that has all three of them that's awesome i didn't know they yeah did that. they they sent it out for like a couple bucks extra when they made the first one and then mm. they just said hey this is also like a stealth way of us announcing we're making the next two um and once you buy them all they'll all fit in this so yeah i'll i'll probably get the one for devil's playhouse just because so these limited run versions for the other two seasons, they came with the case files Telltale mm-hmm. originally gave away, but I already have those for the first two seasons, but they never yeah, did here. one for season three. So I'm interested in seeing what they do. Yeah, very, very interested in that. And yeah, I but hope we're, that, we're not uh, here to talk about Sam and Max today. Yeah, I know. Oh, but we go keep on bouncing with what off you were of it. Say. Let's just, let's well, just, okay, let's do the, the thing we do where we okay. try to like summarize the episode in its entirety in less than a minute. Yeah, go. Well, I'm doing this one too. I've done all of them. <laughs> I know. You can do uh, it. Why break the Why break the streak? Okay. I'll do I'll do the next game we do. Uh, <laughs> it's already the next one. But <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll do it uh and now. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh w- last episode, Wallace accidentally proposed to Felicity Flit. She's all smitten with him. She's about to say yes, but you find out that her great aunt Prudence uh who is basically in charge of her life, I guess, uh <laughs> says <laughs> You can't date anyone if they're part of Prickly Thicket, which is like a golf country club thing. And Wallace isn't. But Gromit hears this and he's like, I can get Wallace in that club and that'll sort it all out. 
so he does that, which just really disappoints Miss Flit. Uh, and it's a golf club, so it's so you got to play some golf. But it turns out this club doesn't have a course, so you need to find no. out where the deed to your golf course is, or else you're going to be arrested for not having a golf course. I think. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you solve some puzzles to find the deed. You get the deed. Then it turns out the deed is basically the whole city was a golf course. So Duncan McBiscuit's going mad. That's a minute. But I'll finish Good up. Job. I'll finish up. Duncan yeah. McBiscuit's going mad trying to uh, just demolish all the houses in the golf course uh, so he can turn it into a, the full golf course again, which includes uh, Miss Flit's house and Wallace's house. Uh, so you have to challenge him to a golf game in order to become the chairman of the club uh, because that it's handed down by like winning games. So once you do that, you, you win, of course. <laughs> you figure out how to win. Uh, <laughs> you basically just say, okay, first order of business, we're tearing down the deed. And you do that. And also Duncan falls in love with Miss Flit even more. And then they leave and then he, she doesn't have to marry you. Which I guess yeah, is fun. what you wanted the whole time. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think this story is very all over the place. Yeah. As you could tell by what I just did. Yeah. Like, the last episode just felt very focused. Which mm-hmm. I like. I actually feel like the last f- a bunch of episodes have been pretty focused. And then this one's just kind of a whole bunch like it doesn't really focus that much on wallace getting married to uh miss flit and then it goes into the club and then it's just a lot of stuff yeah i this is kind of the thing about like taking someone else's ip because they're either cool with you doing wacky stuff with it or not and you can tell that this is one of the ones where like they had a pretty conservative ideal maybe of what Wallace mm-hmm. and Gromit can do versus Sam and Max, where like Max dies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry if you didn't listen to our Devil's Playhouse on Sam and Max or, or, or our season of that. Uh, Max dies at the end of that, dog. <laughs> yeah, he had a lot, they had a lot of freedom with what they could do. Yeah, there's some like real important lore that they develop in the world of Sam and Max that is, um, that feels as canon as anything else and affects characters going forward and Mm -hmm. with this it's like okay wallace can't get accidentally married he just has to get accidentally proposed and then you got to wrap it up (laughs) in an episode um figure it out yeah it would have been fun to see like okay wallace has to be married now (laughs) and you just have to sort of deal (laughs) with that um but i think you could tell that they weren't allowed to do stuff like that which is a bummer in a kind of genre like this because in a genre like this it's all about the story details Mm -hmm. it's all about what you can do with the characters yeah that that's really interesting to think about how just wild they were able to get with sam and max but then something like wallace and gromit or strong bad you really don't have uh as much freedom you can't just like you can't kill coach z i think they actually did end strong (laughs) bad in a pretty weird place because i think uh trogdor came back to life and was like trying to uh, succeeding in burning down the entire free country usa and yeah that's the end of it but it's also like such a like there is lore and canon but it's written over itself so many times in homestar that it kind of doesn't matter yeah with wallace and gromit it's it's a little less uh flexible a little more uh this is what wallace and gromit is please do not stray too far Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah versus like sam and max or monkey island where they could develop the characters further and and push further and do permanent changes to the status quo that's why i'm so excited to get to tales of monkey island they i feel like they really do some cool stuff Definitely. That I, w- I wouldn't have expected in the series. Uh, but with Wallace and Gromit, you kind of you know what to expect with this. Mm-hmm. Um, and that doesn't make it bad. I Overall, I would say I enjoyed playing these Wallace and Gromit games enough. Yeah, I think these games are a very fun instance of this formula existing. Um, mm-hmm. 
I remember playing them at the time, and when I did, uh, I was very excited because I liked Wallace and Gromit from my childhood. But at the same time, it, it felt a little like a little lackluster compared to Strong Bad or uh, Sam and Max. But also, yeah. these things were like it never felt like there was a new Telltale game. It felt like the Telltale game is always kind of coming out. You're getting one per month, usually all the time. Yeah. And what that game is changes. Mm -hmm. But you just play the latest one. Kind of the same way that people watch like a Marvel TV show these days. Yeah, you you know what you're going to get into when you play these. Yeah. um, Like generally every week there's a Star Wars or a Marvel now uh, (laughs) that you can just sort of slurp. (laughs) Just get it inside (laughs) you. And yeah, and, and it's not like that's a bad thing. No. Anything. In fact, I I personally think is Star Wars is great. But <laughs> <laughs> he said muttering under his breath so no one could hear him. Star Wars is wonderful <laughs> and I would never it, say anything contrary. There uh, it is. <laughs> uh I said that as if it's not I love it. Uh <laughs> But but yeah, like it was kind of that with with, um, with Telltale. So like when a Wallace and Gromit happened, and it's charming enough, and the art style is cool enough, and like some of these characters are quite funny. Uh, that's all you need. That's just yeah. It's just your Telltale episode of the month, and you play yeah, exactly. it with a friend, maybe or a sibling or a loved one, and you you get a couple chuckles out of it, and you're like, all right, do it again next month. That's uh, yeah, it's one and- per month. And that is basically how I feel about these Wallace and Gromit games. They're not the best Telltale games ever made, but I still enjoy them fine. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about any particular puzzles in this? Because I felt like it was a good episode for puzzles. I thought so, too. Even if the plot of the episode didn't really grab me, I, I felt yeah. pretty good about yeah. uh, actually figuring stuff out. I, I like the part with... Um, Oh, what is it? When you're trying to figure out, like, there's one part where you have to get keys to unlock uh, mm-hmm. padlocks to get to the deed. And I, I felt like these were all pretty uh, solid, uh, pretty yeah. solid puzzles. Not like the best, most genius puzzles out there, but I felt pretty good when I was doing them. Yeah, so there, there was this pretty cool, actually, I'll, I'll give this episode this for sure. Um, there's this painting of what looks like Felicity Flit and Duncan McBiscuit, but it's from like hundreds of years ago. And it turns out their ancestors were like rivals and the Flits hated the golf course and the McBiscuits were like these rogue golfers that would, Mm -hmm. you know, golf at (laughs) night just so they can golf. Um, Oh, such anarchy. So the McBiscuits had this book passed down of like the the impossible golf swing that w- was done in five steps or, or six steps but they only have the sixth page of it so you don't know what the rest of it is but the flits have this book passed down that's like the five reasons not to golf and if you mm. put them together you realize that oh these books were always the same book yeah um and that like the the feud between the families is what actually divided the book and but if you you can put it together and solve a puzzle that way and that that stuff is really cool uh i yeah. really like that mm-hmm. i agree boy there there really that where isn't we a are? whole is lot that to what say. we're doing <laughs> 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 yeah i got really bored of golf all the puzzles were golf based yeah i got i gotta be honest I don't care about golf. I don't really care about the country club stuff. I just thought this the plot of this episode was pretty uninteresting. Yeah, it, it's a it's a reminder of like again what we're talking about. You get one Telltale game per month. You just get yeah. it, and this one's a golf one. So better luck next yeah. month <laughs> if you don't like <laughs> golf. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, and and we're kind of taking these in at a clip of like you better wow me and sometimes that's just not what it ever was supposed to be and it's unfair to view it through that lens yeah um because at the time you're not thinking like well i've just played literally 60 
Telltale games in a row. Uh, <laughs> so this one's got to be crazy. Uh, you're not thinking about it that way. You're, you you got to think about it in terms of, oh, I, I'm, I'm recharged fully. I'm ready for a new Telltale experience. Oh, it's golf? <laughs> how, how kooky. Uh, I don't how, know how golf that well, nutty. but like, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, one thing about this episode is the stakes are like... The stakes immediately rise like halfway through when it turns out Duncan wants to mm-hmm. destroy the town for the golf course. I liked that. But it, yeah, I liked that, but it also is just like there's no build up to it. It's just that's where the episode is now. And I, I like that they, that it's a Wallace and Gromit episode with high stakes. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just also feel like the last episode, Muzzled, so much better. Felt it felt like it would have been a better ending to the series, even if the stakes weren't quite as high. I just feel like they they worked their way up to them a lot better, more yeah. naturally. Muzzled had a great use of Wallace's inventions, Gromit's ingenuity, and like solving the problem behind everyone's back and making it look like it was Wallace, but it was Gromit the whole time. That's like the whole mm-hmm. com- uh, like the comedic conceit of the concept of wallace and gromit uh um, yeah and just the, the the relationship between a man and his dog in muzzled muzzled was uh at probably at the best it had been uh, yeah i i feel like that's kind of where the heart of the series is yeah. the relationship between wallace and gromit and i feel like even if that wasn't destroying a whole town it, it that those are still some good important things to care about Mm-hmm. I, I feel like you could have ended the game with that rather than uh, destroying a town. Yeah, there, but I do moment... like that he wanted to destroy the town. <laughs> I, I liked it. I liked it. There was a moment um, at the end of the episode that really struck me as strange and forced and out of nowhere. Where really, when Wallace uh, wins the game. And eventually becomes the next chairman of the club. The first thing he does when Wallace and Gromit walk into the club is say, Gromit, there's no dogs allowed in this club. <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, what just happened? He's <laughs> like, Wallace, you are the chairman now. You first off, you're the chairman. You shouldn't be Sec- a dick to your dog. Yeah, secondly, Gromit was just in there earlier for a puzzle. He was in there earlier for a puzzle, and also, thirdly, how am I supposed to feel about that? As, like, I've been controlling both of these characters the whole game. I should be on the side of Gromit, and yeah, this sucks. It felt really bad. Yeah, after all the work Gromit's done to help out, you just don't let him in? Now, I, I, I understand what they're doing. Because it turned out that, well, as one would, as one would do, uh, Wallace accidentally gets every single person in the town stuck in a very small cell filling up with sand. Of course that happens. <laughs> uh, Classic Wallace. And Gromit has to rush in and save the day. Uh, so it requires him to be out of the picture. That's yeah. like how it worked. But still... The, the the way they got there, it, it's played for a laugh of like, hey, we did this and then you're not allowed in the club. But it still sucks. It I it yeah. just felt bad. Um, and we're, we're coming off of Muzzled, which is not, again, it's not like in my top five Telltale games we've covered so far or anything like that. Um, but it just it's did a good job of telling that story. Yeah, it's probably in my top five Wallace and Gromit Telltale episodes at least. It's in my top one Wallace and Gromit episode yeah definitely the best one and yeah i do think the bogeyman i would put at the bottom but mainly just because i i don't think it's like uh, an awful episode but it just the plot didn't wasn't really for me it wasn't that interesting yeah um like you said can't win them all (laughs) i did all right um let's see (laughs) <laughs> is there anything else we want to cover before we go into our segments um i like in the big finale when uh that gromit when he has to save everyone that he's kind of setting up a classic wallace and gromit rube goldberg device yeah in fact that's that kind of is... the one time it really 
uh, you really set up one of those. Uh, great, great segue to a segment because that's my golden moment. Yeah, mine too. For that exact reason. Yeah, you uh, you use a golf ball cleaner, which looks. Let's just let's just call it like we see it. It looks very suggestive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're all adults here. We're all adults here. Uh, it it just clasps onto a a ball or cylinder and then sort of just goes back and forth and like hey hey we're all adults here uh you put that on a bell that if you ring it repeatedly produces an infinite amount of tea uh like in little teacups and then that goes into a grandfather clock where you can attach a golf club to it and then it, it all of a sudden just like it keeps golfing cups of tea into a fire that eventually is extinguished, and then like that stops the whole contraption from uh, happening, which right. stops the sand in Wallace's room from filling up. <laughs> you have to kind of make some assumptions of how a lot of the stuff works. Like, yeah. like how does the sand work? How does the tea work? Oh, okay, it, it, yeah, you gotta. <laughs> it's still though, good Rube Goldberg machine, good, uh, yeah, good Wallace, and well, good Gromit puzzle, really. Yeah, you you know what? We were saying earlier in the series that Gromit does not make for a very good adventure game star Mm -hmm. because he doesn't talk. I still think that. I I still think it. I I agree. But I don't... It still feels... What am I trying to say here? I still like playing as Gromit. Like, it feels right taking control of Gromit to figure out the situations. Mm Mm-hmm. Um... Um... Was another thing I really liked about this episode is I liked a lot of the illustrations we get in this episode. A lot of uh, I, I've talked about before. I like when they do the uh, 2D artwork for this game. Uh, you have like the magazine cover. You have uh, the paintings at, at the country club. Uh, they're all really nice. I, I like how the painting of the Wallace and Gromit ancestors. I forget their names. Um, It's like Goodman Wally or something. Yeah, but, Good- uh, Goodman Wallet Wallets, not Wallets. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that. Because it, it wasn't Wallace, uh-huh. because it's meant to be a different guy. But uh, Walter, I, I like th- I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that painting of them that changes when you get more keys because they start out kind of sinister looking. Because uh, I guess they were made out to be like these real shitheads. But then the more you unlock the padlocks, the, like, softer they get. So they did, like, multiple versions of this painting where they look... uh, First they look mean, then they get nicer and nicer the more you unlock. Uh, I like that. Oh, speaking of paintings, did you catch what happened in the uh, living room? Yes, in in the dining room with the painting above the fireplace. Yeah, it seems like there was a a real claymation model of a bunch of the... uh, It looked like the first two episodes' main characters. Uh, so you got yeah. Wallace and Gromit, and then also one of the bees, and the uh, Tinky Wee and Poochie Woo, and yeah, Mr. Mr. Paneer, Paneer. Constable Dins, uh, I think. Yeah, it 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 looked like someone at the Telltale office put together, like, actual claymation models. Yeah, I was wondering if Ardman made it or something. Uh, no, if Ardman did it, they would look a lot better. They would, <laughs> Here yeah, they, 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 were look, they, they were charming, but, like, not production level. Yeah, here they were, it it felt like they were like, they knew they didn't look very good, because the joke is, uh, Wallace is like, what do you think of our new painting, Miss uh, Major Crumb? And Major Crumb goes, oh, that's the most beautiful painting I've ever seen. Maybe it was uh, fan art. Maybe it was someone submitted their fan art. Yeah, I I mean, I don't want to sound mean when I say it didn't look that good, because, I mean, it's really hard to make... Uh, stop motion with that style. It was just a, a, yeah. a little less produced than a typical Walls and Gromit short. Yeah, exactly. Style. For for like a fan making them, they're very good. You, you you just know they weren't made by a pro, but they're still good looking. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't know where to begin to make a clay character. Yeah, where do I go to to get it? Like the store? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I only go to food stores. Yeah, who's got the time? Okay, so uh, my potent pickup is the Ganges Grip. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. So the Ganges Grip is like a mythical, long-forgotten golf grip uh, that doesn't do anything. It just like launches the golf ball straight in the air and then down back to where it was exactly. 
Yeah, in any other game of golf, that would be like the most useless thing. But for a video game, for an adventure game, it's actually very useful. Yeah, you can figure out how to, I think like four different times you use the Ganges grip. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and like the way you find out is actually uh, terrible and dumb. But the once you get the Gan- Ganges grip, you can use it as an item. Yeah. Uh, which is which is a cool thing like it's it's a kind of swing not a specific club but like a kind of swing that you can use as an item which is nice yeah uh i really hope our last segment doesn't overlap because we've been we've had the same one for both of these yeah i also had the ganges grip um Um, i think it might (laughs) though i'm very curious who your weekly guy is gonna be mr paneer Mine's also Mr. Paneer. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> he he did a good job. I like how he was the uh, announcer for the golf game at the end. That's what I liked. Yeah. And so whenever anything gets a little hairy, Mr. Paneer is right there to say like, oh, um, my store might get torn down. You know, that is a bummer. But they're asking me to commentate this game and I just want to give it my best. <laughs> I, I cannot I love turn that this down. Love yeah, that he's I. Him. I think if I had to pick a favorite of these town folks, I would definitely say Mr. Paneer. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah. it, I am a little disappointed that we'll probably never see these characters again. I don't think any of them show up in anything of the animated shorts. Uh, yeah, I would be very surprised. I wonder if uh, yeah. Telltale owns them, maybe. But... Yeah, they they might own the original stuff they made for it. Uh, it it's, a, it's a little disappointing because, like these aren't the most amazing well-written characters in the world, but I kind of like having like an extended Wallace and Gromit cast. Usually it's just the two. And then yeah. like, you know, whatever new characters they need for the story, but it's usually just Wallace and Gromit. I kind of like having like townsfolk they talk to and get along with. Mm-hmm. And like Wallace's rivalry with uh Duncan McBiscuit. Yeah, that's great. I mean, Duncan McBiscuit not showing up in anything else is criminal. Yeah, exactly. It it really helps to make it feel like a world, like a, a real setting. And it's it's a little disappointing, but uh what are you gonna do? Yeah, it's just it's just a little undercooked, I think. Yeah. It, it, it's undercooked in combination with the fact that Wallace and Gromit, um you might have thought about them as very like bombastic bombastic, like wild animations, but if you think about what the tone of the world is you can't do a lot with it that's not an animated short. Like, an animated short is so perfect for what it is that yeah. it just, uh, I mean, that's why it is what it is. So, yeah. Yeah. But it, it was still nice to have a game to play through. It, we we I, Do we bring up the original, uh, they made a game for Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I think we did talk about I th- it. We briefly before. talked about it, yeah. Yeah, um, so that and this, you can use them for video games, but, you know, we've already gone into why they're not, like, the best characters or world for this sort of thing, but, Mm -hmm. yeah, I still had a pretty good time with these. Yeah, I think, like, a, a, a like, a Cartoon Network take on Wallace and Gromit, uh, could use these these townspeople and this version of the town yeah um and expand on it for like a 21 minute episode and do pretty well or or maybe yeah. more like a probably just two episodes in one episode kind of show yeah um that would do pretty well i agree it it, it is a little bit of a bummer that these guys aren't going to show up again because like with monkey island obviously you're going to have games after with like Guybrush and people and Sam and Max had three seasons so you got to keep around characters like Bosco, Sybil, Mr. Featherly, the cops like you got to yeah. keep this extended world but Wallace and Gromit this was the one time they really had this yeah and it doesn't even get a full five episodes it's four yeah it got four yeah that I I do wish we got another one but just one more I did I was I didn't yeah ex- just a little gift for us mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, it's only been 13 years, so uh, you know there, there might still be some time between now and the fifth episode. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because uh, the new Telltale did re-release Wallace and Gromit. Um, I was looking on YouTube, and they had, like, a trailer for the re-release, and I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. 
to make like a brand new trailer for this old game that you're just relisting. Uh, I thought it was neat just being like, it's back. Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures. Because this is kind of, I, I don't want to say this game bombed or anything, but it is a Telltale game that more than the others kind of flies under the radar. Well, it, I think it's especially interesting because it was removed from sale not when Telltale went down, but four years earlier. In, it was removed that early? It was removed in 2014. Wow. So it was only purchasable for like five years. So when it came back, it was kind of a bigger deal than the other ones coming back, I guess. I guess so, yeah. Um, I didn't know that. But but yeah, I, I only recently found out about that. Uh, I'm glad that it, wow. I remembered to say it in an episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so almost didn't. It, it, it it's just neat that they're able to advertise a game like this again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's nice. I like it. Yeah. Um, you know what I think we might be a little more energized to talk about? What? Next week when we start talking about The Walking Dead Season 2. Ah, spooky! Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so The Walking Dead Season 1 kind of blew me away and was a turning point not just for Telltale, but also our podcast about Telltale. Uh, yeah. So... We, we know that season two is uh, maybe not supposed to be quite as strong as the first, but I know you've played it and uh, yeah. you, you, you seem to like it enough. And we are at some point going to be joined by your roommate, uh, Andrew, who's got That's some strong right. thoughts about uh, the end of season two of The Walking Dead. Yeah, he's very excited to talk about it. He's been, he's been every time I bring it up, he's like, oh, I can't wait. I, I got some things I want to say about it. I'm excited just to jump back into that, uh, into Clementine's story and and to see that develop. And um, because I've just been holding off since we stopped Mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, I could have kept going easily, but I've been restraining myself for you, listener, for your benefit. For me? No, no, listener. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, come on. Yeah, I, I, I've played it a few times in the past, um, I do agree that I I don't think it's as good as season one, but I feel like season two maybe gets a little too much uh, shit thrown its way. Like, I, I've seen reactions ever since it first came out. I saw how people reacted to it, mm-hmm. and uh, people weren't super nice to it. I, I wonder what the consensus is on it now. I, I wonder if it's changed at all, but... At the time, people, I, I have multiple friends who were like, eh, you know, I really like season one, but season two, I just didn't really play. And I, I I've, that's kind of interesting to me because I couldn't wait to get to season two and I enjoyed it. I wonder how I'll feel going through it again this time. Well, we're excited to talk about it and yeah. we're excited to get that episode to you, but it's been another week from now. What? Say what? Come on. This sucks. See you next time. Bye, whatever.